Jaws was a masterpiece of suspense and terror because of how little you saw the shark itself. But that's not the way I wanted it. The damn mechanical shark didn't work. As a result, I had to release a movie that was only a quarter done. Now, thanks to computer graphics, I can bring my true vision to life. Is Jaws the greatest shark movie of all time? Released on June 20th, 1975, Jaws was directed by a then 27-year-old Steven Spielberg. The novel was written by Peter Benchley and it was dominating the sale charts just a year prior. So yeah, the production team really felt the pressure to get this film made as quickly as possible. Not only did they have to create a 25 foot long mechanical shark, the shark had to be reconstructed many times over because of the salt water wrecking the individual parts. How they fuck that up? The shark who was famously named after Steven Spielberg's real life lawyer, Bruce, just didn't work. Spielberg did not want to film this in a freshwater pool or a tank. He wanted the authenticity and the chaotic nature that only the real ocean can provide. That alone made this shoot extremely difficult. Having to build five different sharks for various scenes and scenarios also wasn't the easiest task. George Lucas himself visited the set and broke the motherfucker. Uh yeah, I shit you not. Many of the original cast choices also weren't available or just didn't want to make the film. In short, I guess you can say they didn't think the film was going to work. Most of the production crew felt the same, including Steven Spielberg who almost quit this film various times. Or fired, pick or choose. After a leaked photo of an incomplete shark appearing in Time magazine and the shark simply not functioning as intended, Steven Spielberg was left to kind of improvise on how he was going to shoot the shark with less of it because quite honestly, it just wasn't going to work. Spielberg really umped the creep factor and the anxiety levels way beyond what any shoddy shark devouring humans like the novel implied. I mean, he really did keep it simple. Clever filming techniques and an ominous score really highlight the shark for you. It's what you hear, not what you see. This decision would actually invoke fear into moviegoers. Watching an actual mechanical shark on a hydraulics terrorizing swimmers just wouldn't give you that same fear factor. It definitely would not achieve that same level of terror. Look, me personally, I'm afraid of the ocean and the unknown, so Steven Spielberg really hit the nail on the head on this one. I mean, he really did get it right. This film also needed to be less of a monster movie. It needed actual levity, an inferior shark going way over budget and schedule. Keep in mind, this was the very first major production to be actually filmed in the ocean. Not a pool, the fucking ocean. Martha's Vineyard was actually the best backdrop possible for this film. I mean, you could literally smell New England. Nonetheless, this film had no right to succeed the way it did. It had everything against it. So let's toast and celebrate Jaws possibly the greatest shark film of all time. You know the thing about a shark, he's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eye. When he comes at you, doesn't seem to be living until he bites you. And those black eyes roll over white and then, oh, then you hear that terrible high-pitched screaming. The ocean turns red, and in spite of all the pounding and the hollering, they all come in and they rip you to pieces. An eating machine. It's really a miracle of evolution. All this sort of machine does is swim and eat. Amity Island. A young woman goes for a swim during the late hours while at a beach party. She undresses herself and slips into the dark, murky ocean. While enjoying the cold swim, a shrouded force attacks with vigorous impact. The woman struggles. The sound of her violently swallowing the salt water will be the last thing we hear before she is pulled into the unknown. The next morning, her remains are discovered, washed up on the beach. Newly appointed police chief Martin Brody decides to close the beaches after an autopsy reveals the cause of death was a shark attack. Martin Brody is played by the late Roy Schneider. Chief Brody is the audience in this film, a character who also happens to suffer from aquaphobia. Mayor Larry Vaughn, a greedy motherfucker who fears the economy, will suffer. The coroner, now under pressure, sides with the mayor and declares the death a boating accident. 
Brody, against his wishes, reluctantly agrees to keep the beaches open. Soon, during a crowded summer day, a young boy, Alex Kidner, is viciously killed and eaten. With little choice left, a bounty is placed on the shark, causing an amateur hour at Amity Island. One of the hunters, a grizzled and charismatic fisherman, Quint, played by the legendary Robert Shaw, offers his services to kill and bring back the shark, head to tail, for $10,000. Meanwhile, Matt Hooper, a witty marine biologist, examines the woman's remains after being brought in as a consultant. Hooper soon confirms a massive shark to be the killer. Richard Dreyfus, who turned down this iconic role multiple times, brings to life the comedic oceanographer. A large tiger shark is soon caught by local fishermen. Asshole Mayor then proceeds to claim the beaches are now safe from the deadly predator, encouraging beachgoers to enter the water. In one of the film's most heartbreaking scenes, Miss Kittner confronts Brody and slaps the shit out of him. Miss Kittner blames Brody for keeping the beaches open despite knowing a young woman was just murdered there. Meanwhile, Hooper isn't convinced and slices the tiger shark open, spilling his guts and finding zero human remains, revealing that a much larger shark still patrols Amity. Hooper convinces Brody to patrol the dark waters at night, searching for the shark. They come across a half-sunken vessel as Hooper enters the water. From within the vessel's hull, Hooper discovers a large tooth, identifying it as a great white shark. Suddenly, Hooper discovers human remains and accidentally drops the tooth. The severed head, belonging to Amity resident Ben Gardner, has been underwater for quite some time. Without the evidence, the douchebag mayor pretty much tells Brody and Hooper to fuck off, keeping the beaches open for the upcoming 4th of July weekend. With the beaches packed, some punk kids play a prank with a fake shark fin, only for the real great white shark to emerge and devour a boulder. Panic spreads and now the mayor is ready to listen. Brody finally convinces a shaken Vaughn to hire Quint to kill the shark. Get out of the water! Jaws the Special Edition features over 100 altered scenes. There he is, Chief! Throw it! Throw it! You'll actually get a feel for the shark's personality. You missed me, you dried up douchebags! Ah, oh, my tibia! Oh, you bastard! Oh, you oh, you bastard. Oh. Immediately, there is tension between Quint and Hooper, coupled with Brody's fear of the water. The three have to work together if they are to locate and kill the now infamous Great White. The trio set sail on Quint's boat, the Orca, a vessel named after the one and only predator of the Great White Shark. While Hooper continues to get on Quint's nerves, Brody begins chumming the water. Suddenly, the colossal shark bursts out of the water just before Brody. Estimated at about 25 feet, this motherfucker was scared as fuck. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Quint quickly harpoons a barrel to the great beast, but the shark swiftly submerges into the darkness of the ocean. Nightfall, Quint and Hooper swap stories about their battle scars during a much needed drunken session. Brody is entertained by all this and actually smiles aboard the orca. That is until Quint speaks the tale about the attack on the USS Indianapolis and how he survived. A dark and dreary story enough to sober up any man. After more drinks and a song, the shark suddenly attacks the boat's hull, ramming it aggressively. The orca loses power and the crew have to work overnight on repairs. By morning, Brody does what any sane human would do, call the coast guard. However, Quint, in his obsession with killing the deadly predator himself, bats the radio into multiple pieces. Another long chase follows and Quint harpoons a second barrel onto the shark. As the thick line is tied to the stern cleats, the monster lugs the boat backwards, causing the ocean water to flood the engine compartment. Quint, now in a panic, attempts to cut the line himself, but the stern cleats break, causing the barrels to stay attached to the shark. Soon after, the engine fails and Brody's bad day continues. $10,000 for me by myself. For that you get the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. I say we let him go! The orca is now slowly sinking. 
With little time to waste, Hooper decides to suit up and enters the water inside of a shark-proof cage to attempt a lethal injection of strychnine via a spear. Brody disapproves, but the group is left with zero options. As Hooper descends into the water, the Great White rams the cage, causing Hooper to drop the spear. As the shark destroys the cage by violently thrashing into it, Hooper disappears into the murky depths of the sea. The shark has had enough of Quint's shit and lunges its heavy body onto the boat, devouring Quint once and for all. The orca, now sinking rapidly, Brody tosses a pressurized scuba tank into the jaws of the great white beast. The shark escapes back into the water as Brody climbs the crow's nest. With one final push, Brody takes aim and fires off his rifle towards the tank within the shark's bloody mouth. The remains of Quint flowing with a salty current is the last thing we see as one last bullet collides with the scuba tank. Smile, you son of a the enormous explosion finally takes down the shark. Hooper resurfaces and Brody is ecstatic. The two heroes grab onto the remaining barrels and begin to paddle back to Amity Island. The shark's remains color the ocean red as birds begin scavenging what's left. The king is dead. When all was said and done, Jaws would become one of the most important and most successful films to ever hit the box office, especially during that time. I mean, this movie about a killer shark goes on to become one of the highest grossing films of all time. In fact, it would go on to become one of the most outstanding and rewarding films ever made. Is Jaws the greatest shark movie of all time? Well, obviously, yes. The film works as a horror film, suspense, an action piece, it just doesn't fit in one box. In my opinion, it's just not the greatest shark film ever made. It's one of the greatest movies ever produced, period. Next time you go out into the ocean, keep an eye on the water. And don't forget your rubbers, chief. Thank you for joining me on this very special Shark Week edition of Horror Fiend Drive-In Theater. Please leave a like on your way out. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more blood curdling content just like this, subscribe to the channel. Come on, you horror fiend, you know you want to.